Hey, this is Tom Jacobs from tdjacobs.com and also healingsuicide.com. I'm an evolutionary astrologer, energy worker, channel, and a medium. And um, I do all kinds of different healing work and teaching and tutoring and energy work and all kinds of different things. The main site is tdjacobs.com. Um, that's where you'll find everything I offer, services and products. And the uh, healing suicide is, um, you know, an attempt to explain several things about soul and how it understands its human lives and how to deal with difficult emotions that might make us feel despair and wonder if there's a way out. So there are two different, uh, very different kinds of sites. So this video is about um, your highest good, this concept. Uh, and I'll share with you what I understand as a spiritual teacher, you know, somebody who channels guides and other beings. Um, It comes up all the time. And uh, as I've been saying to some students and clients lately, what, what I do in my work often comes from me collecting a bunch of data in the 12th house. Like what's going on in the world and the collective and you know what's going on and that kind of inspires me to develop different tools and different uh, teaching, teaching tools. So this idea of what's in your highest good, um, it's, I've been thinking about this for years um, because I was, you know, schooled or counseled in what was in my highest good, receiving guidance, right, as a student. Um, and then a couple of months ago, I just sat down and I said, I was talking to Ascendant Master Jehudi, who's named also Hermes Thoth, St. Germain Merlin, and I was like, can we talk about this? <laughs> can, we, can we just get into this? Because we humans often don't understand this until we've been, um, you know, kind of put through the ringer of experiences that fit with the highest good. And then we understand a higher perspective. So I thought I would offer this teaching in case it's helpful because this is what I said to Jehudi. The word highest is in the phrase. <laughs> well, that sounds great. It sounds healthy and healing and like you're raising your vibration. It's in your highest good, right? Well, the other word in the phrase is good. How could that be bad? Right. But what happens, um, what ends up happening is, uh, sorry, grocery list for my girlfriend. Um, you get taken into the experiences that you need in order to grow as a human. But if somebody says to you, oh, this tragedy you're undergoing or this uh, chaos or this experience, this, you know, manifestation of fear or pain that now fills your view screen and occupies you and, and your attention, it's in your highest good. Another way this comes up is that people say, why do I have to go through this? Well, at some point you might have invoked something like I am, I would like to experience what's in my highest good or I need to heal something, right? And then your guides start rubbing their hands together and doing a little dance because you are asserting the will to grow and then what is in your highest good is organized and arranged. So if somebody says to you, ask for what is in your highest good, well, your logical self, your personality, your brain might say, well, that sounds amazing. Uh, of course, why wouldn't I ask for what's in my highest good? Here's the thing. Beings who help you, specifically your spirit guides, primarily and as the first uh, line of, of support, your spirit guides, but also if you work with angels and masters or whatever, um, they can read the manual that your soul wrote for your life. So your brain cannot read that manual. One of, one of the things I do when I teach evolutionary astrology is I teach you how to do it. I teach you how to look at a person's birth chart and understand that manual so you don't have to be a channel it's a just a, a way of teaching that i've developed teaching you how to think like the ascended master right channel without having to channel him but your brain can't read it so a scenario comes up and it's really hard for you and you say why 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 you might go to a reader your guides might say oh well this serves your highest good this is in your highest good. And you're like, why do I have to experience pain? Why, why, why? It's in your highest good. Well, your brain and the parts of you that resist pain, parts of your ego, you know, your egoic construct or structure, they uh, 
they can't read the manual that your soul wrote either. So, so this video, I, I always think I'm going to do a six or seven minute video and then end up being longer. This one I think might be even longer than I think it's going to be. Um, in the description, after I'm done, I'm going to type out some resources with links because there are other things that are educational that fit with this topic that will that will help you if, if this appeals to you. Um, if you resonate with some of the questions and, and quandaries I'm going to describe. So you say, I want to heal, I want to grow, I want to have healthy relationships, I want to have fulfilling work. I want to um, whatever, right? Whatever, I want to have um, respectful relationships or I want to, whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, I want to thrive and be healthy, whatever. When you assert that desire, you are essentially stating divine law. The more that you are in your heart and your heart and your spirit resonate together, that what you're asserting, expressing this desire or whatever, this intention, this destination you're headed toward, the more that you are in alignment with truth and spirit, your heart, the more impactful what comes next is. So when you assert a wonderful thing, that is in your highest good, to be in your heart and your spirit, to be clear about what brings you joy and what purpose you would like to serve humanity or what function you'd like to have in your community or your family or your world, what you might like to create or do for your community or the world at large. Whether it's work you get paid for or not, that sense of becoming, right, a version of yourself that, that you're in love with, that inspires you, that makes you happy to be here. Whatever it is, you're doing it right. But what happens next, quite often, seems to keep you away from it. So this is kind of part of the manifestation teaching that I teach too. Um, and I'll link to the Energy as Money as Energy webinar below too. Um, what is in your highest good always is that you overcome all the fear-based frequencies, fear, pain, regret, depression, anger, hatred, resentment, bitterness, all the things. All the list of terrible things we don't wanna feel. So if you say, I'm headed toward this amazing destination, what comes next will be opportunities for you to resolve old pain, fear, guilt, shame, whatever, so that you can get there. Whatever happens next shows you what you hold vibrationally as a belief in your consciousness, even in the unconscious realm, that keeps you from already being at that amazing destination. So if you say, my, my, the thing I use all the time is, uh, I want honest friends. If, if, I, if I really mean that, I'm vibrating divine law, right? We want to believe that our intentions really do vibrate that way, and they do. But what happens next is I'm going to get coming to me whatever in my field vibrates the opposite. So maybe I, the next three people I meet aren't, are, are obviously not very honest or are very secretive or something, right? My brain will say, I said I want honest friends, and that's where I'm headed. So what is this? But I've attracted unconscious blocks in the form of other people. Blocks, knots or bruises, I like to say, are all the fear-based or not love-based frequencies, right? All energies can be divided into two categories, the love or faith-based, the fear or not love-based, right? All the things in the one category. So maybe this person I met reminds me of somebody who lied to me 25 years ago and I realize, oh, you remind me of that kid. I never forgave him because I was so hurt or whatever. This person could only vibrate to me now. The opposite of my intention could only come to me now because I vibrate something negative about that energy. 
let's say I say I just want to trust people. I may draw people who I can't trust. The same with I want fulfilling work. I want a partner who listens to me. Anything, all these things. You'll, you may draw the opposite to you because of what is vibrating under the surface. So what's in your highest good? To overcome the not love or fear-based vibrations. To grow beyond the limitations of fear. That's what's in your highest good. So why do you have to go through this pain? Because you're vibrating something painful and it's not resolved. It hasn't been released. You haven't come to a resolution place where you bring love to the darkness or to the shadow or to what is not loving. You have not, in other words, been empowered by bringing that love to the part of you that feels pain or something not loving. Okay, so that's part one. Part two, many people, and do not judge yourself if, it, if you realize you're in this category. Many people, maybe almost all of us, carry forward a kind of immaturity from our childhoods where we believe that if we are in pain, we've done something wrong. Like if I pick up something hot and burn my hand, somebody might say when I'm like six years old, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Don't do that. So if I experience pain, then I'm doing it wrong. If I experience safety and support and love and warmth, then I must be doing it right. So there may be parts of you interpreting difficult scenarios as some kind of judgment toward you or about you. So the second part of this teaching is stop it. <laughs> second part of the teaching is pain is a normal part of the human process to learn how to go from fear into love. Your soul is already divine love. It doesn't need to learn anything except through your eyes. It's saying, I wonder what it's like if I forget that I'm God. If I forget that I'm the divine, that my nature is love. What if I play at being in, a, in this human body and I believe I am my body and I believe I'm separate from divinity? What happens if I make this choice? So what, what do I do? Where, where, what will it take for me to go from fear into love regarding family, work, health, everything, relationships, everything, regarding self-esteem, regarding a sense of life purpose, creating something, not creating something? gaining, losing resources? How will I go from fear into love? What will it take for me to go into love, to bring love to fear and all its parallel frequencies? So what's in your highest good is always moving from fear into love, but your soul incarnates here. This is really important. Your soul incarnates here in the first place to forget that it is love. So you as a human do cycle through pain. That's why you're here. That's why everybody you've ever met is here. The humans anyway. This is kind of specific to humans given how our central nervous systems function. It's a long story, but this is for humans. Like your cat has its own journey, but it's not quite the same. But for you to learn how to process energy and emotion, how to go from fear into love, that's the journey. Well, how could you do that if you didn't have fear? How could you go from pain or despair into loving frequencies, compassionate frequencies, acceptance, generosity of spirit, kindness, vulnerability? How could you, how could you, you know, really understand vulnerability if you didn't have defensiveness? How could you really understand healing if you didn't understand wounding? How could you understand joy? How could you have any concept of what joy is if you didn't experience despair? So your true nature as a soul is love and your human journey requires 
that you experience at times not love because your empowerment path is to bring love to not love. Your soul doesn't judge you no matter what you do or how, how you do it. Your soul is watching outside space time, observing if I believe this and I believe that and I believe that and then I make this choice, hmm, what's that like? Hmm, check. Watching you do things and then say, check, that's what it's like. So no matter what you've experienced, you can't harm your soul. You haven't wounded or offended it. There's no possibility. It's divine love. It's divine consciousness. Goddess, God energy. All that is. Spirit, source. So if you can accept these premises, uh, you can understand what comes to you as serving your highest good often isn't pleasant. If everyone always agrees with you, you won't be challenged to evaluate the validity of your thoughts, your thought process. If everyone always does what you need before you know it, you'll never learn to take care of yourself. If everyone else always says yes to you, you know where this is going. You don't get to know yourself because you don't learn f through reflection from others. You don't have a critical self-evaluation. So you can't become empowered by bringing light to what hurts. Light to darkness, love to shadow. So quite often, this phrase, your highest good comes up, comes up in my, in my, this phrase comes up in my head or in my client's heads and they wonder why their guides aren't helping them. I, I asked for what's in my highest good or I set out this goal and this intention and what I'm getting is awful. Where's my support team? Where's my help? So a couple things on that, because it's wrapped up with this. Guides can only communicate on loving frequencies. You could only hear them when you communicate on loving frequencies. If you get angry and frustrated, if you go deeply into pain, they can hear you, but you can't hear them back. If you go deeply into pain or anger or guilt or shame, you'll find parts of you that don't feel supported and aren't open, perhaps aren't open, who feel abandoned or isolated or something like this, who feel unloved and unsupported. So part of your invitation as a human is to go into those emotions without believing they are who you are. To listen to those parts of you, in other words, to cease creating shadows by acknowledging what you feel and treating it as valid because then you're bringing light to shadow. I'm, I'm hesitant to share this personal example. Should I? Hmm. I might regret it, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I have a part of me. I think I've said this before, but I have something in my life right now that's activated it. So it feels a little tender and, vulnerable and perhaps a little dangerous that I might say too much, but um, uh, I have Pluto conjunct Venus in Libra and I'm a Scorpio sun. And those energies regarding being in relationship, like Scorpionic energy can have a person hurt to a depth where then a part rises up in self-defense and looks very aggressive or cruel or mean or something, right? So, Period. But, but all others see is the anger. They don't understand the depth of the fear because, or the pain where anger comes from because they're afraid of the energy, so they shut down. And most people don't feel safe in their bodies, and so if somebody has anger or frustration, uh, they don't know what to do with it. So um, when I feel deeply hurt, or really deeply offended or something, usually it's hurt. So if somebody insults me, you know, 
it's not the same as if somebody betrays me. For Pluto, Venus, and Libra, and Sun and Scorpio, this is like the, the worst thing. Part of me will, have, will develop this, like will feel this urgency to vengeance. And I don't act on it, but I let this part of me create a plan. And I let that part of me tell me, like speak, all the intricate details of the plan. And I know I'm not going to do it. And then I wonder, maybe I will. And then I'm like, no, I won't. But I give voice to it inside my head. And then I don't act on it. Essentially, I'm letting that part of me speak because the pain is valid. The anger is socially unacceptable. Vengeance is not something that I want to partake in. But a part of me can get hurt enough that I respond with that Scorpio stinger. So I remember I have the stinger and I tell my, I remind myself I don't have to use it. So I'm validating what I'm experiencing and I'm choosing not to be afraid of the angry part because anger comes from pain. I'm validating the pain. By validating the anger, I can more easily get to the pain. I'm validating the pain. I'm not creating a shadow. I'm not shaming part of me for having an intense feeling and a super strong reaction to something. But by the way, just don't betray me. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. No. Um, so, <laughs> um, so, what's in my highest good? Is it to act in a revenge-like way? No. What's in my highest good is always, whatever the scenario, to go from fear into love fear type frequency into love type frequency. That's always in my highest good. If I shame this part of me, I'm creating shadow. I'm not validating myself. I'm creating a problem. I'm creating a block. I'm creating a knot. So what's in your highest good? Whatever it is that you need in order to grow beyond your old blocks, fears, pain, depressive states, despair, hopelessness, fear, fear, fear. That's what's in your highest good. Whatever you need to get beyond old fears. So where are my guides? Well, my guides are orchestrating scenarios to push these buttons so that I have the opportunity to go from fear into love. Where are your guides? They're making deals. They're making backroom deals and you know secret handshakes and back rooms, like helping you co-create with others the opportunities for you to meet the fear frequencies that you carry in your unconscious or conscious self so that you can bring light to them and learn to transform from fear into love. So where's my help? The help is always with you. Will you be grounded enough to open, to have the grounded humility to accept that something really challenging or horrible serves your highest good, even if it's extremely painful, even if it leaves marks? even if you are never the same again. It's in your highest good to learn to go through some very difficult things to become stronger by bringing love to fear and transforming fear. Transforming your relationship with all the fear-based frequencies. That's it for today. Thank you for your time and energy. I'm going to post again in the description some resources that will help you along this path. Take care.